Hi, I'm Rainer and welcome to my train room. Last week I went to visit a local model railroad club and uh, a lot of the members there were running the trains with their with their phones and uh, I knew that I could do that in here, I just hadn't kind of gotten around to it. And then when I saw them doing that, I thought, you know what, I really need to get that up and running in here. Normally, I use this NCE power cab. And this is not a large room. I mean, this cable reaches everywhere I need to go in here, and it's just me in here. But with this control, I can only actively control one one locomotive or one consist at a time. I mean, I can start another locomotive running and then call up a different locomotive, but it's only got one throttle on here. And so to jump between two locomotives running is a little bit awkward. So I thought it'd be nice to have a second throttle, but I don't want to spend the money on another NCE throttle, especially another wired one. But I do have a phone. So I thought, let's let's get this up and running. So what I did was I got online and ordered one of these. And this is the uh, NCE USB interface. And this allows the NCE power cab to connect to my computer. So the connection is really simple. This cable goes to the plug on the, the other empty plug on the face plate of the NCE system. And this is just a long USB cable that runs around the room and over to my computer here on the desk. So if you do get one of these USB interfaces, the other thing to remember is they come with these little jumpers on the pins right here. I'm not sure where, where what those jumpers are needed for, but they need to all be removed for using it with the NCE power cap. So I'm guessing that for different NCE systems, you need to use jumpers in different locations for the power cab itself, just remove all four. In this situation, I'm using a Windows computer, although I do have a Mac as well. Most of my video editing is done on a MacBook Pro, but I do have a Windows machine that I built a few years ago that's that can do all the video editing as well, just not quite as fast. But it's here, it's up and running, so I thought, let's get it up and running. So, connected that to it. Next step in the process was to go to the NCE website and I'll show you screenshots of where you get it. You need to download the drivers for this board and install them on your computer. Now when you get this USB interface, it has this little instruction booklet. You can ignore the rest of the booklet, just look at the back page. It tells you very clearly at the beginning, do not install or run JMRI until the USB driver is installed. That's just to make sure that you're not going to have issues. So get the driver installed get this plugged in into your NCE system, turn the NCE system on, have your computer running, and then go and download JMRI. Now you may need to install or update Java on your computer. Just follow the instructions that come up, come with JMRI when you start doing the installation. And I will show you here on the screen, my screenshots of where I downloaded JMR, JMRI from as well. When you get it up and running and fire up JMRI, it will look for an interface like this and you need to go in there and set it up. Now, what I had to do on mine was it didn't know which port it was on. So go in your computer settings and take a look at your um, computer to see where things are on what ports on mine. It was on COM3. You can see it on the screen here. So then I just went into the settings in JMRI and picked COM3. And then the other thing you need to do is you need to basically tell JMRI to start looking for a throttle, um, an interface or a, or a throttle. And so it doesn't, mine at least didn't by default automatically look for it. So there was a, another page where I had to go and actually tell it to look for it automatically every time I turn JMRI on. The final thing was my phone couldn't connect, even though I had a pop-up thing asking me to do the, to change the firewall settings. I thought I had them all changed, but for whatever reason in the firewall settings, there's actually two lines that are the same. And I ended up having to pick, check off both boxes in both lines, even though they're labeled the same. Obviously they're not exactly the same, even though the name is the same. So anyway, just if you're, once you do the installation, if you're having difficulties, connecting your phone to your computer, 
just double check to make sure that all your firewall settings are set correctly to let it through. Once I did that, no problem. Now this computer is actually on a wired network. It's got a wired ethernet, ethernet connection, but it's the same network as my Wi-Fi for my phone, so it actually works great. Once you have all that set up, I'm using Y throttle on the phone and very simply just go in here, click on that, it's connected. Now I need to find a locomotive. Let's choose 182 over here. So we'll go into here. I could, I've got recent, so I could just go in here and type 182 set. It's on. And now you can see in here, I can turn the light on on that locomotive. I can turn up the throttle and get it going. I can stop, go in reverse. And I have control of any of my locomotives, any of my DCC locomotives on my phone. But this throttle will work as well. So now I can actually use my phone to control one locomotive, that throttle to use a different one. And I think this could actually be convenient when I'm in here shooting video, because sometimes I have cables running all over the floor and the throttle cable on that thing is getting caught on my lighting stand or my tripod or something like that. So having something that's wireless is going to be really nice. Not saying I'm going to use it all the time because that has more buttons and functions on it, but this is a nice convenient addition. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is the cables are just running around the room and kind of a mess, so I got to clean them up. This thing just comes as a straight little board like this. I downloaded, printed this, 3D printed this little mounting bracket to put behind here so I can kind of get it on here without the solder connections hitting the wood. But I think I'm going to get back into Blender and see if I can design a little bit better case or housing for this that will actually protect the front of the board because I'm thinking of just mounting it on the front here and uh, just because of where the cables are going to reach. So let's see how that goes. I'll see if I can get this mounted cleanly, but fairly simple, straightforward setup to get it going. There's plenty of YouTube videos out there showing you how to get it going. The, the two kind of tricky parts that I ran into was when I went through, I realized that it was it didn't automatically figure out which port to connect through. So go into your settings, figure out where that USB device is showing up and make sure that's set in JMRI. And the second thing is make sure your firewall settings are not blocking things because that's what happened to me at the beginning. Didn't connect. As soon as I corrected that, everything connected just fine. So nice little setup. I now have wireless control in here for, I think this thing was under $70. So not too bad. If you have any questions about this, trying to figure out how to set it up, feel free to send me a message. I will try to help you with my limited experience. Thanks for watching. See you next time.